So uh, here we are in uh, Wiltshire. Yeah, we're at David Butler's farm today. I'm really looking forward to seeing David. Um, he's obviously very good on Twitter. We see him in Farmers Weekly. So really interesting to see his farm today. And what a location. Here we are in a particularly beautiful part of uh, Wiltshire. Uh, David, tell me a bit about the farm. Well, Julian, it's good, good to uh, welcome you back, back to the farm. It's good to see you. And uh, also, uh, we've had a bit of rain, so we're very uh, happy as farmers today to have had, had some, uh, some rain back on our crops. Um, where you're looking down here is into Pusey Vale, and we're lucky to farm in roughly the middle of Pusey Vale, which is an area of outstanding natural beauty. So um, I am a farmer and uh, we're a family farm and there's four, four partners in our farming business uh, here, in, here at Wooden Rivers. And so I farmed here myself since I left uh, university and college, so about 20, 20 years ago now. And uh, we're a mixed farm here, so we've got uh, crops and uh, livestock. We've got the kind of crops you'd probably expect us to be growing. Um, so we've got wheat, barley, all seed rape, oats and uh, beans, winter beans. Um, we have a 300 cow dairy and all together with the young stock and some of the beef animals that we have, which are on this downland where we stood, uh, we've got about 600 head of cattle. So I like to think of us as a traditional mix, mixed farm and I feel that works very well for, for, for where we farm here. Um, our soil type is, is one which we're quite proud of, it's called green sand. Right. Um, it's quite a, a light, uh, light soil as the name, name would suggest. It, it, um, is quite hungry uh, but has the ability to produce good crops yeah. uh, and it's pretty easy to work um, but uh, we have to kind of manage it sympathetically and carefully because we're all as farmers trying to look after our soil and, uh, and by being a mixed farm that, that helps um, in many ways to, to help us keep the soil in good, good shape. <laughs> So David, we're in one of your meadows at the moment. How do you manage this? Uh, well, the soil under here is actually quite poor under this particular bit of ground, so it's uh, quite, uh, quite, quite flinty. Um, and traditionally it was, once upon a time, part of our arable area. Um, but about 10 years ago we put it down to grass, and it's now badged as permanent pasture. As part of our environmental schemes, we actually manage it without putting any inputs on it. So it has no fertiliser and it has no, no herbicides or any sprays applied. <clears throat> the good thing about that is it does make it a little bit more biodiverse. So obviously with the lower fertility levels, some of the other herbs and flowers will come through. So there's cow slips out here um, and there's, there's quite a lot of other wildflowers as well that you can, which you can find, which is really good. Uh, the downside is um, then productivity wise, it's a lot less. So we will make one cut of hay on this. It's quite a low yielding hay uh, sward um, and we can use that to feed the cattle in the winter um, and then we can graze it for the back end of, uh, of the summer with, with some beef animals but the yield on this in terms of output of grass would probably be somewhere around 10% of what we get on some of our, our ryegrass lays that we have in the valley. Shall we go and have a look at those ryegrass? I'd love to show you. Good. So we're down now back in, on the green sand in the valley um, this last year was a field of wheat and in the autumn we planted it back down to Italian ryegrass and we were actually concerned last year after the drought uh, that we might be short of forage stocks so this was put in as an extra field of grass um, and surprising perhaps you might this actually already had a cut of silage done on this although we're only uh, about halfway through May we've already done a, quite, a, quite a, a healthy big cut of silage a few weeks ago yeah. and it's already growing away well for, for, for a second cut <laughs> yes. so we're really pleased with that and we do get some good high yields off, off fields like this. So David, we're in a fantastic looking crop of all seed rape here. What have you done to manage this? Uh, well Mike, I'm pleased with this field. If not for any other reason, then it's right beside the road. So you always want the fields that are very visible from the road to, to, to come well. Uh, our all seed rape has been a mixed bag this year. And this is one of the fields that has done better. Uh, I think there's three kind of reasons I, I can identify uh, why this crop has worked. Uh, number one is it's followed after winter barley because rotations are always important and by following winter barley we could get a nice uh, good stale seed bed pretty quickly after harvest um, and then uh, also roll that in to retain the moisture which was very important this year. Uh, number two 
Before we put crops in, we always try and put on a good quantity of farmyard manure onto the stubbles before we actually prepare the seed bed. That keeps the fertility high, helps the crops to, to get up and away. And thirdly, there's no doubt last season there was an element of luck and, and judgment uh, and we drilled a little bit earlier than other people did and we just caught some showers um, just as the crop was trying to come through and, and, it, and it got it away. So there was some luck in whether we caught those showers or not. Uh, so all in all, yes, we are pretty pleased with this field. We hope it yields like it looks because you never know with obviously rape. Um, but I've got some other fields that really are quite badly damaged with uh, cabbage stem flea beetle um, and although they've made attempts at flowering, the stems are so damaged and brittle that the crops are actually folding over and you can see where they're just kind of crumbling away. Um, so going forwards we're not sure how much rape we're going to grow in, in future and what we're going to swap with. I guess uh, beans may be a, a potential substitute. Um, we're going to have to take, take each year as it comes and I think our rape, rape acreage unfortunately is going to continue to, to go down rather than up, which is a shame because it has been a, a good break crop with some really good features. So David, we always like to feature a piece of kit. Um, what have we got here? Well, I thought I'd try and do something a bit different, perhaps to what you usually see. Um, we, for a long time, have run a Horsch Pronto drill. Um, it's going to be one of the key machines uh, on our farm. This obviously isn't a drill we're looking at now. This is the cultivator uh, that's also made by Horsch called the Joker. Uh, this is a three meter Joker. We've had this on the farm now for over four seasons, and I would like to nominate it as my and I think with my team support, our, our favourite piece of kit um, for a number of reasons. Firstly, very high build quality, so it's very strong. Uh, it weighs just about uh, 3.3 3 .3 tonnes, um, so it's a good, good strong frame on it. Um, it's a very simple machine, there's absolutely no hydraulics on it. So the adjustments are all mechanical, um, so there's very little that can go wrong. But it's also a very flexible machine um, because you can alter the depth on the front on these, uh, on these legs here um, between 6 to 24 inches, so you've got a hell of a range of depth. You can also take off or put on the wings to change the amount of mixing it does. So depending, for example, on concerns on black grass, you can do a more minimal dis disturbance approach or you can uh, mix away uh, some of the surface material more. Um, theoretically, you can take all the front section off and run it just as a set of discs. So we, we always felt it's a very well-designed machine well put together and importantly as well the running costs are relatively uh, low compared to what we were doing before with a shakerator so we uh, estimate that fuel and wearing parts wise this machine would cost us uh, about £10 an acre less than what we were doing before. So what does the future of uh, the farm look like then, David? Um, I wish I had a crystal ball to be quite, quite clear exactly which way we're going. Um, and every single farm is going to think about how they move forward individually in a different way. <clears throat> for me uh, and for our farming business, I think uh, de-risking is an important part of what we need to do. We know we're not going to have the support system that we've had for the last 20 years of my farming career in the next 20. There is always an element of risk to producing arable crops the weather can uh, turn around and, and throw your plans out the window. Uh, a big hope is that the, the wonderful new technologies that we've got around the corner will be made available um, so we can best, best adopt those as, as they are in other parts of the world. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>